Hi Commissioner, thank you for your time to Africa Media Australia. We'd like to talk to you today about uh, the role of the African diaspora in, in helping Africa. You just gave a message to the Botswanese uh, diaspora in Melbourne. How critical do you think uh, that role is in trying to uh, bring about uh, e economic development in Africa? Yeah, no, I think uh, the role of the diaspora is very important in the sense that uh, because of their presence in foreign countries, they are better placed, better qualified to articulate the needs of their countries of origin in Africa and to the extent that they are closely in touch with the residents and the citizens of the host country to bring people to people relations. We as embassies or high commissions, all we do is official, shall I say, opening of the doors. But then what's more important is people to people contacts. So countries, big countries like Britain, they thrive more because of the diaspora. Uh, in the rest of the world. Britain is the best example I can give you. And uh, we would like to emulate that. And uh, in the case of Botswana, this is new for us because we used to have students abroad who just returned. But the first time I noticed that we have people who are now residing in foreign countries. And as I said, the world is now a village. So the role of the diaspora is very important because people no longer look at their own countries of origin. Uh, to go and work. They work also in foreign countries and in international organizations. And you can only do it when you're outside. And uh, you retain the loyalty, the patriotism, and then bringing people of the world together in terms of people-to-people -people interaction. And that goes into, that ties in with the, the new story that is coming out of Africa, a story of economic development. We know that Botswana has been a very good example of uh, economic and political uh, stability and development for, for quite long, but that story is actually expanding across many other countries right now. But you have a feel like in countries like Australia, the media hasn't quite caught up with that story yet. They're still kind of looking at the old Africa with the old story. Is that your feeling as well? That is true. Uh, the first mistake that uh, foreign countries like Australia make is to uh, envision Africa as a country when it is in fact a continent of 54, 55 countries, diverse in their cultures, diverse in their languages, diverse in their uh, political history. Australia is a country of uh, people from the same culture, the British mostly. It's only in recent times that they had uh, an infusion of people from other countries. But you are right, in terms of Africa, that is uh, really the concept or the vision. We must help work together uh, to teach the Australians that no, Africa is not a country, it is a continent. And that we are very diverse, but at the political level, diplomatic level, we work as a team, for example, in Canberra. Uh, those of us, that we are, there are only 14 countries represented in Australia. But we say, much as we are sent by our individual countries, we also fire the flag of Africa. We also work for the interests of Africa as a whole. That's why we have a group of uh, high commissioners, ambassadors from Africa. And from time to time, we meet actually every month to discuss common issues and how we can promote Africa in Australia. And Africa Media thinks like um, uh, the the, uh, the media is a very good platform to contribute towards that education, so to speak, of the Australian public on the realities of Africa, as well as uh, uh, to give a bit more, a better picture of uh, Africa to the uh, investors. Is, is there any any uh, way that Africa Media can, for instance, collaborate with uh, the uh, diplomatic corp to be able to be able to tell that story more? That is correct. Our our challenge so far is access to the media houses because we have a story or stories to tell. First, to tell them about the African countries and our aspirations and the opportunities in Africa where Australians, apart from mining, because so far they only know about uh, mining in Africa. There are many other opportunities. So we depend on you, the media, to help us sell that story uh, to the Australians, the opportunities available in Africa. For example, in Africa, 30% of uh, arable land is still available, untouched. So that's the potential. I mean, countries like China, they have no land. There are too many, the country is too small, for example. Uh, so Australia, the same, is mostly a desert here, but their technologies are so high, they can uh, partner with African uh, countries and African farmers, for example, and in many other uh, areas of uh, human endeavor, as I say, to invest in Africa.
And what would be your last message to the Australian investor who may have some hesitations there, thinking of risk? Africa is, is a risky place to, 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 to invest without even any sense of understanding how the, the things play out in Africa. Yeah. The message is first that Africa is not a country. It's a continent, much, much bigger than Australia. A, a billion people or more than a billion people. And the opportunities are great in Africa. And uh, that they should not be dissuaded by, you know, some occasional or hot, what you call hotspots here and there in some countries in Africa to think that, you know, okay, it's in Africa, so the whole of Africa is like that. No. If I take Australia as an example, there's so much violence in Sydney, so much violence. We always read about and see on TV. But we never say Australia is violent. We never say Australia is a negative country. It's not a, a country you can invest in. So it's exactly the same thing. This is human behavior. So it's, that, it's ignorance on the part of Australians. And as I say, we depend on the media like yourselves to sell this story. That they should look at Africa as 54, 55 countries of opportunities across sectors.